Hello, it's Shari here today, and I am going to be making this spooky village card with some Distress Oxide blended backgrounds. So for the background of the card, I'm going to be using Twisted Citron, Peacock Feathers, and Faded Jeans. And I'm just going to speed things up so you can see the whole process of how this background came together using the blending brushes. And I'm just going to go back and forth between the colors and get an even blend, starting with the green on the bottom, the Peacock Feathers in the middle, and the Faded Jeans on the top. I did want to make a comment that the images that I use on this card I had colored prior to starting my filming. So coloring is not part of this video, but you can always look at the screenshots to see the colors that I used on the little houses. And you can also go and check out the Spooky Village intro video on the Lawn Fawn channel to see ideas on how to color these houses. So you can see I'm just going back and forth between the colors till I get a nice even blend and the lines between the colors kind of disappear. And then I'm going to go with a water bottle with just clean water and just spray it. And then I'm going to pick up some of that water with a paper towel. So I got some nice splashiness going on. Then I've got the liquid stardust that I've added to a mini mister with some water and I'm just going to give it a nice spray over so it has just a slight shimmer. Now I'm going to mount this panel onto another piece of cardstock because it got kind of warped with all the ink and the water and the things that I added. So this is just going to give that panel some stability. Especially since we're going to be cutting the stitch circles into it, which will take away more of its stability, this will help. I'm just going to set a block on it while it dries so it dries nice and flat and sturdy. So once it's dry, I'm just trimming off the edges, and this way when I mount it onto an A2 size card, I'll have a nice white border, very thin white border on all four sides. Now to do the just stitching double circles here. So I'm just going to pick out ones of different sizes, and I'm just going to place them on the background to where they go off the edges. So it's kind of going to make it look like an embossed piece of paper or a patterned piece of paper, sort of. So I'm going to start with these two that I've got here. I'm going to run that through my die cut machine. And then I will pick out some more sizes and start overlapping the circles. I like making them go off the edge because it makes it look like a pattern. So I'm just going to vary the circles, vary the placement, and I am sort of thinking about the circles that I'm going to layer on top. So I'm trying to put them in places where these don't get covered up by the images and the circles that I'm going to place in the foreground. So you can see I've got that nice texture with those circles, and since I mounted that to another piece of cardstock, it's much sturdier than it would be without. Now to work on the circles where my little seams are gonna go, I've cut some stitch circles here in various sizes, and I'm gonna go in with some wild honey, some carved pumpkin, and some ripe persimmon just along the top. So the light color is gonna be the bottom, and then I'm gonna just do a slight bit of the ripe persimmon on the edges to just define that edge. So I'm going to do it to all three sizes. And I'm just going back and forth between the colors to make sure that blend is nice and even. Mostly I cover the whole thing with the wild honey and the carved pumpkin and then just do the edges with the ripe persimmon. Now I'm using that same mini mister with the liquid stardust added to the water and I've just pulled out the sprayer. I'm just tapping it to add some droplets of the sparkly water and then I'm going to add some gold metallic watercolor droplets. So I just like to get that watercolor nice and soupy and then just pick it up and then tap my brush to get some nice gold splatters. Now I'm going to take those same circles that I cut the white that I made into the orange panels, and I'm going to cut some storm cloud cardstock. Then I'm going to use the stitched hillside to create the ground for all of my little houses to sit on in these little vignettes in the circles. So I'm just going to lay the house that I'm going to use in each circle down just so I can get the placement of the hillside die 
and then I'll just hold that in place with a little bit of tape and run it through my die cut machine. This way the bottom edge is perfect and stitched just like the circle and then I've got that nice little hill side so it's a nice finishing touch. I can just add some liquid glue to those little dark ground hillsides and just add those to the bottom of my circles. And now that I've got all those assembled, I can place them on my card base where I want them to go and then figure out exactly how to trim the ones that are going to go off the panel. So you can see I use the house to make sure that I don't trim too much off and I've got space for the images that I want to use on each of the circles. So the two that I'm going to trim, I'm just going to hold them in place with some washi tape. Flip it over and I'm going to use a pencil to mark where the edges of this panel are. And then I can pull them off and use my paper trimmer to cut a nice straight edge along that pencil line. So I'm going to go ahead and start assembling my card. I've got a white card base. I've put a bunch of adhesive on the back of that panel. I'm just going to stick that right to the card base, leaving that nice little white frame around it. Then I have put foam adhesive on the back of these circles. I'm just going to take that off and line them up with the edges of the other ink panel that I have there. Now I can start to figure out how I'm going to assemble these little seams in my circles. I like the idea of some of the images maybe going off the circles. I didn't actually end up doing that, but it does add some dynamic elements to these little circles and all these little seams. I decided to keep them all kind of contained. And I'm using liquid glue to glue some to the circle itself. And then I'm using some foam adhesive on a couple of the elements to pop them up. Now for my sentiment, I'm going to be using one of the wavy banners. I'm using this sentiment from Pick of the Patch that says, Smile, it's Halloween. So the way I like to curve my sentiment to fit the banner is I'm going to flip the banner over, lay my block on top of it, and curve my sentiment to match it. Since the sentiment is stamp side up, then when I flip the banner back over, it will be the right curvature to match the banner. And I'm just going to stamp that in some black ink. So I decided that the background needed a little something else. So I decided I wanted to put some black splatters to it, add a little more texture. So I've just cut the circles here out of some typing paper, and I'm just laying them on top as a mask to protect the little seams that I already have adhered down. I'm picking up some black watercolor paint, putting it on a block, and then I'm going to flick it off the side of the block. And this will create some little tiny splatters. So you can see how that's already giving that background panel a little more texture and interest. Then I can go in and if I want some bigger ones, I can just pick up the paint and just tap my paintbrush and get some bigger splatters.
So now I can just remove those pieces of paper that were just sitting there. They weren't even glued down. And you can see that the circles were protected. Now my banner here is gonna kind of go across the circle and onto the background. So I'm putting a piece of foam where it's gonna cross over to the background so it's pop up to the same level as the circle. And then I use some liquid glue to get it onto the circle underneath that house. Now I've got some sequins here and I've just kind of placed them around and I will pick them up and add a little bit of liquid glue to glue them down to their final placement. These are just clear sequins to add a little sparkle, but not too much distraction. And then here is my final finished card. I just love all the colors. So here's another look. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.